find our terrain model from graphical filter, and then we're also going to go in and grab our east survey terrain model. Now once you have both of those in there, <clears throat> do a fit view, and so you're going to see what we just created over here on the left, and then this is that east terrain model that we just brought in as well. So there really is no overlap. Um, they're going to be just side by side, so we're going to use a pin for this. Now that we have those in there, we're going to go under our terrain tab, and then we're going to choose additional methods, and we're going to go and choose create a complex terrain model. For the um, for this case, since we are just depending the primary, which depending on the tr which one you want to choose as primary, doesn't really matter because you're not going to actually cut into one or the other. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and choose the survey as our primary, which is what we did over here on the left. And then the east survey, we're going to add over as a pinned. You can also switch the, the order of these around if you want. Um, for the feature definition, I'm going to go down and choose existing triangles. And I'll set this as the existing ground survey. All right, so all the time you're going to be, uh, you know, editing your original survey. You know, maybe you're switching out completely, or you're going to be attaching some additional shots to it, or you know, whatever the case might be. Uh, but it is a good idea to give your designers a complex terrain model. Um, so if you don't start with a, you know, two terrains like this. What you're going to do is you're going to create kind of a dummy terrain, which is just going to be a delta of the other one. So the only thing it's really, all the triangles are going to be exactly the same. You know, the same amount of triangles. It's just going to merge the boundaries together. Um, so as long as they're not designing on, right on the boundary, you shouldn't have any issues. Um, but that way, it creates this container. So if you need to add an additional, or you need to switch one out for the other. You can just do so here in the complex terrain, and then that's what they have referenced into their files to work off of. So this is dynamic then. If there's a change to one of the reference files, mm -hmm. this will update with it. Yeah, yeah. Now it, it, the files have to be up, opened. So um, what I'll tell people to do is create a batch process, um, which is let me go ahead and click finish here. So it's, that's uh, just kind of an old functionality here. Let's say tools, batch process. Normally when you run a batch process, you're gonna run some sort of uh, command file on it. In this case, all we wanna do is just wanna open the files. Um, so you would go in and you would choose the files you want to open, and you're gonna, you're gonna process them in the order they were created. Um, so you know, we would start from our graphical filter here, and then we would choose our complex terrain model. And then you would save that as a batch file process. And then as any time you update anything, you can just run that. And all it's going to do is going to run through and open up all the files to push that change through. That way you can do it manually. All right, so now we've got our complex terrain model here. Let's go ahead and just turn off. Uh, again, you don't want to detach these at all. We're just going to turn the display off of these references to see what we're left with. And notice that um, it's gone back to the original, right? So we did that edit model. That's because that that's really not dynamic. We're, we're editing the model. And whenever we create this complex model, whichever one was the primary surface, it's going to read the source graphics and go back to that original creation. So all those edits are going to be lost. bring this up. This is a better picture of what we're doing between merge and append. Um, so this is page 50 of your workbook. Um, so if you're merging, um, so like over here on the left I've got my, my primary terrain model. On the green I've got my uh, merging terrain model. And then any points in here, it's basically going to toss out the primary and replace it with the green emerging surface. If we are, uh, 
which is what you see here. If we're appending, um, then it's all, both points are valid. It's just going to use both of them and triangulate between them both. All right, next we're going to go in and add boundaries. So this is probably what I would use before you start going in just editing the model. I like this option pretty well. Um, and what's nice about it, it does remove the dynamic. It's no longer dynamic, but it's really easy. As soon as you delete that boundary, it's dynamic again and updates. And then you can go and put your boundary back on. Um, but I do, you know, the first thing I would want to do is change the edge length, or I'm sorry, change the edge method. And then the second thing I would do would be just add my own boundary feature to control those triangles. Um, and then this would probably be my fourth thing I would do would be adding a boundary. And then lastly, I would do edit model. So it's kind of the, the order that I would use these tools. So we'll go to add a boundary. Um, and so we have some different options here. We'll just run through all of them. Let's we'll start with adding a rule boundary. And we'll choose a feature definition for this. I'll just put it on terrain exterior, which is under terrain feature folder. And I'll call it the boundary. All right, now we're going to locate our terrain model. Left click to add a rule boundary. And it doesn't appear to be any different, but now we have this pink line that has handles on it. Um, so what we can do is you can use some microstation tools over here in the drawing tab to add and remove vertices along that boundary, and that's going to control our edge triangles. Um, so if I go in and I insert a vertex, you know, you can go in and clean that up this way. And then if you need to delete a vertex, you can do that as well. So if you want to just kind of move around and that a little bit. Here. You want to add boundary? What is it? I added a rule of boundary. Yeah, so that's right here. Then once you're in the dialog, you choose add a rule of boundary. And then once you add that boundary, you know, I did add a feature definition to it. Put it on terrain exterior. That makes it pink. And then from there, I can go in and add vertices to the line or delete them to just control what that, that boundary looks like to control the edge triangles. Um, or you can just move those handles around as well. Here is we clean up our edge triangles, but now we renew it's no longer dynamic. It's no longer going to update based off of those source terrains. You know, it's always going to just use this. Um, so if you did need to, what I would do is I would let's say I needed to remove this to make it dynamic again. Um, before I do, I would add a just extract a graphic from it. add a boundary. Don't let me. I might just want to copy this as well. Let's see. So I'm going to delete that boundary. Um, so that's going to just reread the source graphics. Um, but what I've done here is I've created 
I was just basically stolen from that and I've created a copy of it. So now if I move this back into place, I should be able to add this feature as a boundary now to my actual terrain. Now it's still dynamic. Um, so that's what I'm going to try to do. Maybe you want to edit this a little further. Looks like I'm cutting my building out right there. So I'm going to give this a shot. So I'm going to go in here and we're going to go into my terrain tab. We're going to add a feature, locate the terrain, and we're going to add this in as a drape boundary. And that'll clean that up. And now it's still dynamic, you know, so I can update this boundary now if I need to. And then, you know, that'll update my triangles but I haven't lost my, uh, my, I haven't lost my connection to the terrain models that I created this from. So that's how I would use that tool. See what we have left. I think that might be about it. Okay. 